Hospital St. Michael. The woman, whose identity has been withheld by police, is said to be in serious condition. The incident unfolded just after 7 this morning on a link road near Sky Mall. CBC understands she was making her way home when she was attacked by a man known to her. He was wielding a cutlass and chopped her several times about the body. The man was apprehended soon after by police and is currently in custody assisting with the investigation. An eyewitness spoke to CBC News and gave her account of what occurred. I was here, she carried the girl to catch the bus to go to school. She came back and bought a paper from me and told me she'd go and get the other daughter ready for school. She crossed the road and I watched her and time she get by that big tree on her. I hear squealing, a shouting and a hollering. And I got up and when I got I saw a man in a green shirt. I, re I didn't know it was a Collins, I thought with a stick, chopping, chopping and she trying to get away from him. And I walked little ways up the road and I watched them. And when she get near to those two houses, John, I saw her fall down and he's still over her with this thing chopping, chopping, chopping. And a gentleman got off a bus here and went down there. And that is like how he stopped doing the chopping. And when I looked and I saw him running down by the supermarket with the Collins in his hand. The use of jet bridges at the Grantley Adams International Airport could be closer to fruition. The revelation from Acting Prime Minister and Minister of Tourism and International Transport Richard Seeley. He made the disclosure during a ceremony at the Hilton Barbados last evening to celebrate the 65th anniversary of Air Canada flying into Barbados. We are also committed to enhancing the infrastructure at the airport and seaport in order to make ourselves more competitive in terms of capacity and comfort in terms of those who are coming to our shores. Yes, gone will be the days when, if the rain is falling, uh, someone from the airport has to share out umbrellas as you descend a very treacherous stairwell to get down towards our terminal. Mr. Seeley says it will form part of the master plan for the airport. We are in an advanced stage of designing uh, adjustments to the terminal that will include the jet bridges, of course, that we hear so much about. And that will be done in the context of the airport master plan that will take into account all of the additional capacity that will be needed for the air sea transfer, for example, program and all the expected increases that we, we, we will have in, in, in airlift capacity, which of course will be led by, by Air Canada as they continue to increase frequencies. The Barbados Fire Service is the latest entity encouraging Barbadians to keep their surroundings clean. It's worried about potential fire hazards. Acting Chief Fire Officer Errol Maynard is telling them once their surroundings are clean, this will help to prevent grass fires spreading to their property. There were instances of direct burning, and that is from a grass fire. It burned directly to the house. It means that your house was not, around your house was not clean as it ought to have been, and there would, be, would have been rubbish and other combustibles that could have allowed the fire to travel from a grass piece onto your house. And that is something that we have seen over and over, so we encourage you to clean your property. And even if there's an adjacent property, although it might be costly, it's not as costly as if you lose your home. Mr. Maynard wants homeowners to invest in smoke detectors. Smoke detectors saves lives. They tell you that there's a fire at an early stage when the fire is really small, and therefore you can do something about it at that stage. If you don't have a smoke detector, the fire can grow and, they, and then you will not be able to address it in the early stages and it will get out of hand and you may lose your property. It's not as expensive as putting in burglar bars. And we put in burglar bars to avoid or to keep out a thief who may or may never come. And that is very expensive. The same thing we can do for fire. You know, for the possibility of fire is always there. And therefore, we need to invest in our own safety. Well, Barbados and India have held talks on how the two countries could cooperate. The talks came during a meeting between High Commissioner of India, Subhashini Murugasan, 
who met with Minister of Education, Science, Technology and Innovation, Ronald Jones. The High Commissioner said her country offered a number of scholarships each year through its Indian Technical Economic Program, where Barbadian civil servants can train in a variety of areas, including information technology, management and financial management. Minister Jones welcomed the cooperation in the area of education. Discussions also took place on the need for more training opportunities for medical students studying at the University of the West Indies and the possibility of such students interning in India. Issues related to agriculture and food security, science, technology and innovation were also discussed. Students in Barbados are being asked to give more consideration to technical and vocational careers. Educator Dr. Joyce Stewart provided the advice as she delivered the feature address at the Queen's College Speech Day ceremony. She says there comes a point where we need to become bold and innovative. Dr. Stewart says other countries took the step and she has faith that Barbados can do the same. In Norway, 95% of the students could very easily have gone into medicine or any of those high, high, high achieving um, occupations. These are the students who chose to do things that we would call tech voc. They're the ones who became and uh, are becoming the entrepreneurs because they went out of the theoretical academic way of looking at stuff, got into more practical things, and the country is moving forward. Principal of Queen's College, Dr. David Brown, gave the principal's report, which highlighted the school's academic successes over the last year. I assure you that the CAPE results were even more outstanding. 120, 122 students took Unit 2 of this examination. The overall pass rate was 98.2. We achieved 100% passes in 16 of the 19 subjects taken by the students. And a pass rate of over 90% was recorded in five subject areas. This included 125 grade ones, 96 grade twos, and 141 grade threes. Barbadians are being reminded they must first obtain an import permit from the Veterinary Services Department if they're planning to bring meat or other animal products into the island on their return this holiday season. Meat and meat products in their original commercial packaging may be brought from the USA, Puerto Rico and Canada. Commercially packaged cooked chicken and chicken products are allowed from the Caribbean. Importation of poultry and poultry products from the United Kingdom is prohibited at this time due to the avian influenza outbreak. However, other types of meat from the UK have not been restricted. Applications for permits should be made at the Office of the Veterinary Services Department here in the Pine. We'll have regional and international news just after this break. Stay with us. Community Files. The Ministry of Education is staging a series of town hall meetings for parents and guardians of children who will be taking the 2015 Barbados Secondary Schools entrance exam, the Cuthbert Moore Primary in St. Helens, St. George, and Bay Primary, Bayville, St. Michael, will be the venues for meetings on Tuesday, December 16th, while the Luther Thorne Memorial Primary, Wilde, St. Michael, will host a similar session. All meetings begin at 5 p.m. The Race of Champions comes to Bushy Park on December 13th and 14th. Win a ticket for you and a friend by texting the answer to this simple question to 9810. One event comes to Bushy Park on December 13th and 14th. You can text as often as you like, up until midnight on December 10th. The draw for two winners will take place on December 11th. Regional news now. Some 1,757 illegal immigrants were deported from Trinidad and Tobago between 20, 2010 and October 2014. Attorney General Anand Ram Logan provided the statistics as he described as mischievous and malicious charges of racial and religious discrimination or racial profiling in the deportation of illegal immigrants. For 2014, he said the number one country to which people were deported was not Africa,
but Guyana. Other Caribbean countries people were deported to included Jamaica, the Dominican Republic, Cuba, Haiti, and Dominica.